I've been asked if I would do a quick video about how to wrap things around something like a pole. So imagine a rope or, or leather bands if you're making a, a knife blade or something. And there's a number of ways to do this. And there's also a lot of good videos on it. So I'm probably repeating things here, but I'm just going to show you a couple of quick ways. So the first way that I'm going to show you is I'm going to come in here in wireframe and grab those vertices and shift D to duplicate them and pull them up. That's the scale. I'll go back out here so we can see what we've got. So I've got a little a little circle here. Let's just make sure that we break it out, P to break it out. And so I've got that. Now I'm going to convert that into a circle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just right click and convert to curve and come over to the curve dialog box under geometry and bevel depth, hold shift and just pull this up. And now I've got that there. Okay, so you could take that and then you could just add an array modifier in the Z. I'm gonna go one in the Z and zero out the X. And then you can put as many segments as you want. And you now have that. You still have the ability to come back to the curve and adjust, you know, the size of it or whatever. So, I mean, if you put a rope texture on that, that could pass. It's very regular and it's very sort of horizontal. Now, if you also wanted, you could come in here, go into edit mode and have it selected and then scroll down here. Now this is still a curve. You could convert it to a mesh or you just come down here to the shear tool and then take this sort of rectangle here and pull it like this. And they'll split like that. You can come back to your array and you can sort of squash it down a little bit. All right, so now you have that effect. And of course, it's just a circle at the back. All right. But uh, depending on the viewing angle, you may never see that because keep in mind, if you're doing textures, you often will have a seam and you don't want that to show anyhow. So that's that's one that's with really two ways you could sort of do that. So I'll just move that off to the side and I'll take the pole shift D to duplicate it move it back here and I just want to grab the bottom and shift S cursor and select and bring my 3D cursor there. Okay now another thing that you can do is you can bring in a plane okay you can see I've got the vertices selected I'm going to take these two and I'm going to delete them so I'm just left with this piece here. I'm going to come over to the modifiers and choose screw and you get this now you may have to change the axis depending on how your pole is oriented. Mine is going up the Z axis, but if yours is going down the Y or the X, just experiment with that. But see this screw value here, hold shift to just start pulling and you can see it separates out, but doesn't really look that good. Now what you can do is you can take this point and delete it. So you have just that point and let me come back there. And you can see what it's starting to do okay you can move it up or down increase the iterations to get it to wrap around more times and it becomes kind of like an electrical thing now the neat the neat thing about this is um, if you convert this to a curve it's a little easier to see but if you come in here and you pull that in you can sort of see that flashing you can um, you, you can make it bigger or smaller uh, what I am going to do is once you kind of know how far apart you want these you can convert that right to a curve and I'll do that in a second I'm just going to bring it down like that and bring up the number of iterations now the steps are important as well here um, in terms of how, how detailed it'll be but let's say I had that if I was satisfied with that, I could go ahead and apply the screw modifier and then convert this to a curve. And this is where I could add my thickness or depth. I have that. And I'm going to scale it so it's smaller. And now you have this and you have the, the, the open ends there. Um, again, you probably would want to hide those. So if you're looking from here, 
You might take this rotate it in the Z. Let's see if I can just get them in behind there. You know, that kind of thing. So you achieve roughly this, but you, you had it as a spiral, and that spiral gives you the opportunity to do a lot more things uh, with it as well. Okay, so that's another way of doing it. Let's move that over. Take this again, duplicate it. I'm going to come in here and grab that, shift S, cursor to select it. So that's two, uh, you know, kind of a circular ones, uh, which works good for screws or, or rope going around, whether it's straight across or up like this, you know, let's say you're tying your ship to the dock or whatever. But if you wanted to have more flatter pieces, so it looked like sort of leather wrap around a baseball bat or a knife handle or something like that, uh, you could do a similar thing. Now let's try this actually with a curve. Let's try this with a curved path. Okay, I'm going to go back to here. So this is what I have. I'm going to rotate 90 degrees. Pull it out a little bit and scale it down. Let's see what happens if I take that, which is a curved path, and put on the screw modifier. There are not as many modifiers for curves, but we can try this and then increase this and number of iterations and so that's not looking quite right yet so experiment with the the direction this goes just so I rotate Z90 now we have this alright so almost a spiral staircase type thing let's try flipping it up rotate Y90 okay let's scale it down a little bit now you have this now as you push it in you get closer to to that so if you want that spiral effect and uh, you know if you want them tighter just bring this down you can add a solidify modifier and just decide which way you want to go I'm gonna go inwards like that so you can get a very nice effect uh, with this Increase the iterations, decrease that. If you want to change the thickness or the sort of height of the of the bands, you can scale this in the Z. So you can have really thin ones and then bring them close together. You know, that kind of thing. And you can play around with the position of this and do this kind of stuff. The other neat thing about using a curve is you can take these points and as long as you're kind of orthographic, let's try that. Take these ones, maybe we'll scale them out. Take that one and push it in. And you can start to get the thing to bow, sort of. I don't know if that's the term, but indent. We could try taking these ones and pulling them out a little bit more. Yeah. If you add a subdivision to it, you get that. And uh, I'm going to, um, my 3D cursor is right there. I don't want to rotate from this point. I'm going to switch this to 3D cursor and just rotate. See if I can move that stuff to the back, the end there. Now, ultimately, you would convert this to a mesh and get rid of faces you don't need. And that's that's a neat effect. I don't know how much it looks like rope or a leather wrapping. Let's put that there. And let's look at another uh, method here. I'll just bring that there. I don't really need that. Now, in this, in this method... What I'm going to do is I'm going to roll my mouse up a few times like that, put some edge loops, press three for face selection and shift alt and click these ones like that. And I'm going to shift D to duplicate and P to break them out. So I have these pieces. Let me make sure I get them. There we go. Go into edit mode. I'm going to press S to scale and they're scaling from there, but that's fine. Let's put that back on medium point. Okay, so maybe I got that, and then I'm going to take them and press E and Alt S and pull, and that'll bring them in. X faces to delete the inside faces, so now I've got this. 
and I've deleted the inside faces. And then I can come in here and shift alt and click the edges. I'm going to bevel them, or you can put, use the bevel modifier, but I'll go ahead and do it this way and see how it works for us. So I've got the edges, control B, pull, you can use two or three, whatever. That'll help the shading, may not solve it completely. Okay, so I have those, let's slash key, bring that back. And then uh, maybe we could drop an edge loop in each of these, actually, I'm gonna go into all of them, drop an edge loop right in the middle, and then select that edge loop. Now, keeping in mind, I've got quite a lot of vertices. You might not necessarily need to do that much. Control B to bevel, pull just with two, do something like this. So they've all split. And then let's try, zoom in, E, Alt S and pull. Let's see, actually I didn't need to. Maybe just Alt S and pull it in to get a similar kind of effect as we had here. Yeah, that's that's okay but the neat thing about this method and I think I might need some a little bit wider but the neat thing about this is you can you can come into edit mode and you can scroll down again to shear and you can do this and you take this one and if you want to leave that on you can come back to this or just go GZ pull it down here press S to scale maybe scale up just a little bit do something like that. I'm gonna take this one, GZ, pull it down, go ahead and shear it a bit, scale it, and then we'll do another smaller one. Maybe we'll take this one, duplicate it up, have a little bit of a less of a shear. You know, so you can get, you know, a wrap like that by just doing it, you know, more by hand. get an interesting an interesting result maybe uh, this one I'll come down you know that one might look the most realistic um, let's see if I join them together and they all look the same you know I may have missed one you know it starts starts to look like that if you bring in a curved path something like that and you say rotate Z 90 you know you can you can build this up uh, in fact it's probably easier if you start with some depth so you see it so imagine that's a rope whatever and then uh, you know you, you take the points and you do this and I'll just look from the top for now. I'll go in wireframe so I see see that. And you just start going around like this. I'm pressing E and then G. And uh, you're gonna have to, uh, at some point, start moving these, these points up a little bit. Maybe we do that. And then come around again. And it, it, you know, it, it'll definitely take some, some tweaking to do this. And you know, as you can see, it's kind of on top of the other one. And sometimes it can be hard to figure out which point was for which one. I'll just go around to the back and then adjust this if I can. But you can make it a lot more um, realistic and make it do whatever it is you want to do. It just, it, it takes, definitely takes more work. And my eyes go funny with all those dots. I'm not sure which one I'm, which ones I'm, I'm looking at, you know, but uh, once you, once you get the shape that you like, you're, you're in business until then, you're going to be fiddling for quite a while. So that's probably why people tend to tend to use other methods but uh, yeah that doesn't look good yet
you know but that's the that's the general idea anyhow so that's three ways that you can wrap stuff around things